Hello, ladies and gentlemen, loyal imperial citizens and rebel scum alike. Welcome to another Liam Maiden gameplay video. Back with more Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes today. A little bit of a, a, a different video today. Just going to be a short video where I'm kind of giving my uh, sort of impressions, as I said, my kind of uh, state of the galaxy address, just my impressions of the current state of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, where the game is at, um, and how I'm feeling about it at the moment. And the reason I'm doing this is partly because I want your guys' feedback. I want to know, you know, your impressions of the game right now, how you're feeling about everything, because we've had a lot of changes come to Galaxy of Heroes lately, and not all of them, I think, have been that great. First up, uh, part of the reason that I'm, I'm making this video today is because it's actually been a while since I made a Galaxy of Heroes uh, gameplay video here. The last one I did was a little while ago when we were unlocking um, Admiral Radus. Other than that, I don't really feel there's been a whole lot for me to make videos about. I mean, sure, we've had blog posts and, and road, road ahead um, posts, which I am going to touch on today, and I could make videos kind of breaking them down, but I don't want to just be repeating information um, that's already out there for you, and I also don't want to be repeating too much content that other people are on, right? So, you know, Cubs fan, um, Arnold, people like that are already making some of those videos, breaking down what's being put out in those blog posts. So I didn't just want to do um, a repeat for you there. So I was kind of stuck on one sense. I was, I was, you know, looking at all the videos I have queued up to make um, for Marvel Strike Force, and and then I was looking at Galaxy of Heroes and thinking, you know, what is going on? We don't really have a whole lot for kind of mid uh, non whale players to be excited about in the game right now, um, and that in itself I think is a bit of an issue. So first of all, what I want to do um, is go just over to the blog post really quickly. So obviously one of the big things that happened recently um, is the you know, post about the Grand Inquisitor. We just had the Grand Inquisitor kit uh, reveal. Obviously, they've been teasing this character for a really long time. I am not going to go into the kit reveal, and I'm not even going to really talk about the Grand Inquisitor. The simple reason is I am nowhere near unlocking him. Nowhere near unlocking him. You need the Inquisitorious characters um, up at high level, and I, I don't have them. I haven't even been um, trying to work on them. And that, I think, is a problem, or rather it speaks to a problem with the game right now, that the newest faction and the newest uh, galactic legend that they've introduced here, so, you know, not even touching on what people have been saying about the limitations of Grand Inquisitor's kit, um, the fact that this newest faction, the Inquisitorious characters, mid-game players like me, or maybe mid to late game players, right? Because I, I have unlocked most of the content, but I'm not completely free to play, but I'm definitely not a whale. Uh, we just don't have any reason to engage with them. A, they're not a great faction. They didn't come in and shake everything up. And B, they're just not really accessible. They're really difficult um, for, for players like me who aren't willing to shell out uh, huge amounts of money uh, to unlock right now. So am I excited about the Grand Inquisitor? I absolutely am not. The second big change, of course, that we've had in the game is the introduction of Datacrons, or Datacons, I think, as, as many people are now referring to them, um, th this new way to upgrade temporarily upgrade your squad. Now, they, these were kind of introduced, as you can see here, as a way to revitalize, breathe life into maybe old uh, squad members. So interesting, then, that these initial data crown are focusing on uh, the Inquisitorious characters, right? Brand new characters that should not lead, need life uh, breathed into them. Uh, but here we go. That's where the main focus seems to be, at least initially. Um, another example of a new initiative in the game falling flat in my mind. Um, now, the obvious criticism with, with data cons, of course, is that they're asking you to um, uh, put money into these. Now, you can see here they've involved the various different currencies, so this is a way to spend um, shard, the currency you get from duplicate shards, and also ally points, which is good. But to get the, the materials that are required in high level, you really do need to be spending crystals, and of course, crystals equals dollars, folks. Uh, so you need to be spending actual real-life money on these in order to make effective use of the uh, datacrons. Um, and it's temporary, right? This isn't even like I'm investing. So I spent money unlocking Sith Eternal, for example. I now have Sith Eternal. The money that I invested in my roster is still in my roster because I still have Sith Eternal. Eventually, th this whole game's going to die. So any money you put into Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, just like any mobile game, ultimately you are just losing, right? You're just like entertainment, like paying to go to the movie theater or something. You get your fun out of it and then it's gone. Uh, I think we do have to bear that in mind. Whatever mobile game you're playing, this is temporary. Um, but I do 
do get the longer term investment from investing in a character like Sith Eternal or any character or any gear that you invest in in the game. Datacrons, not so much. You're going to invest in them, then a few months later, they're going to disappear. Um, understandably, that's got a lot of people irked, a lot of people unhappy about that aspect in the game because it seems to just be a license for CG Capital Games to just kind of print money off us, right? Just continue to try and take money from us with these temporary boosts that we're all going to need to spend on uh, for, for really just time limited gain. And in a few months time, we're going to have to spend again. So for that reason, if nothing else, um, my interest in Datacrons is really kind of non-existent. As you can see back there, I've, I've not even tried to free-to-play farm them. I'm not saying that I'll never do that. I might do. Um, but I really, I don't see them adding that much to the game. Again, especially for kind of mid-level or even end-level players, if you're not a Kraken, if you're not really going for that, you know, that one spot, in the, the top spot in your squad arena or the top spot spot in uh, uh, Grand Arena, for example, if you're not up there, if you're not already spending, if you don't already have that Kraken roster, I really don't see the point in investing in Datacrons. I'm certainly not going to spend money on them. Um, I'm not even really going to chase them free to play. Yet another initiative uh, that's kind of fallen flat. And you know, it's really disappointing, especially when I compare it to other games like Marvel Strike Force, uh, Raid Shadow Legends, for example, where they constantly have uh, new content, new characters being added to the game. And generally speaking, it's much more accessible, I think, and much more worthwhile investing in than uh, a lot of the stuff that they give us in Galaxy of Heroes. With that in mind, I just want to quickly head on over to Sensor Tower. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Sensor Tower, it's a pretty cool um, website. They track a lot of analytics, a lot of data uh, for people's app usage um, across all sorts of different platforms, all sorts of different apps. Uh, they have a, this is just a, the, the free version that I'm looking at. They do have a paid version if you really want to get into those kind of analytics. It does look very cool if you're into that kind of thing, but it does also have some useful free information that you can look at. Now, this is actually from an article that was published a little while ago on their site looking at the top 10 gacha games. Now, I think I'm pronouncing that right, gacha. Um, so and for those of you who don't know, that kind of refers to this sort of like uh, vending machine mechanism where you're kind of collecting things, characters, whatever it is. It's like a sort of virtual vending machine mechanism that they have inside the game. Uh, almost always includes, you know, in-app purchases. So basically free to play games. And they were looking at the top 10 gacha games in the US. Um, and this article actually is looking at the, the fact that half of them are IP based, right? So half of them, five of them have IP attached and five of them do not. But I think this this chart here is interesting for another reason. These are the top 10 gacha games in the US last year, 2021. And look who is in 10th place. Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes making $147 million. Guys, that, I mean, sounds like a lot of money and it is a lot of money, but that is pathetic compared to where Galaxy of Heroes used to be. This is a billion dollar game. Look at the top there, Genshin Impact um, with uh, almost, well, just over $400 million. I knew Genshin Impact was big. I didn't realize it was that big, almost half a billion dollars in 2021. And there's no IP attached to that. That's pretty insane. Uh, number two on the list is Raid Shadow Legends. Already mentioned them again. There's no IP there. That's quite a steep drop off from uh, Genshin Impact's 400 million, but that's still a sizable amount of money there. And again, that's a game that's adding a lot of very accessible and fresh content um, to its players. So the first IP based game that we have on this list here is Star Trek uh, Fleet Command. Um, now, nothing wrong with that. Star Trek, of course, is going through a moment right now, right? Got lots of new shows, lots of new things in the works. So understandable, people are going to be very interested in that game. But hang on a second. Doesn't Star Wars also have a lot of new stuff happening right now? A lot of new shows, a lot of new stuff. Wasn't that also happening in 2021? It absolutely was. So how come Star Trek uh, Fleet Command gets 222 million? Again, a massive drop down from the number one spot, but still 222 million million dollars compared to Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes uh, 147. That's a massive drop off and I really expected, so I had no idea Genshin Impact was so big, but I really expected Galaxy of Heroes to be up there where Star Trek Fleet Command is, where Marvel Strike Force is, where Marvel Contest of Champions is, not the bottom of the list, not 10 out of 10 of the top 
10 uh, gacha games in the United States. I'm kind of shocked by this. And maybe this is part of a bigger trend in the game. Because if we stick to with, with Sensor Tower for a minute, you can see uh, that last month, so this is more recent data. So in May uh, 2022, uh, Galaxy of Heroes made about $7 million in revenue and had about 100 thousand downloads so that's people either downloading the game for the first time uh, or re-downloading the game a hundred thousand downloads seven million dollars in revenue so at that kind of level uh, seven million dollars it's actually tracking uh, for for less money this year um, and I don't know how representative that is of the other months of 2022 but that's less money this year than it made last year even that put it in tenth position so now let's check out Marvel Strike Force, see how they're doing for the same period. So again, this is May 2022, but they have 200,000 downloads, twice as many people engaging with the game. Now they only made 2 million more. So twice the number of downloads, only 2 million more in terms of the revenue. So obviously it doesn't mean twice the number of downloads equals twice the amount of revenue. Um, and 9 million isn't that much more than 7 million. I totally get that. But I think the important thing here is really the number of downloads. All of these people engaging with the game compared to just half that amount engaging with um, Galaxy of heroes. But I hear you, downloads don't tell the full story because if we check out uh, Star Trek Fleet Command, the highest rated IP game on that list with that data from 2021, we see that for May 2022, so last month, they only had 30 thousand downloads so that's less than a third of the number of downloads for star wars galaxy of heroes but they made eight million dollars so on fewer downloads um they're making uh, more money they're making eight million dollars they have fewer new people engaging with the game but they still made a million more than star wars galaxy of heroes so it's not all about new engagement you don't constantly have to be growing the player base obviously star trek fleet command and i know that there are problems with star trek fleet command right i'm not i don't play it i did do a video a long time ago uh, where, I, where I tried it out for the first time. It was fun, um, but it didn't immediately grab me. And, you know, secondly, I've also heard that it's very, very play to win. I know we can play about that in, we complain about that in all the mobile games that we play, but I, I've heard, and again, let me know down below your thoughts and comments, but I've heard Fleet Command is very um, pay to win, and that's not really what I'm interested in. Um, but obviously they have a system. They have a system for in-game purchases that works because they have fewer new people engaging with the game, but they are still making more money uh, than Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Star Wars, the largest franchise on the planet, um, and it's being outstripped by both Marvel and Star Trek. That's pretty insane. So bringing this back home, you know, what does it all mean for the state of the galaxy? Uh, what does it all mean for the state of Galaxy of Heroes? And the truth is that I don't know, right? This isn't a video. I don't have any secret knowledge here, and that certainly wasn't an in-depth um, analysis of those figures there uh, by any means. But I do think that it, it points to the fact that Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is in a weird place right now. The state of the galaxy, I would say, is is weird. Uh, a little bit down and weird. That's my, that's my analysis. That's my, uh, you know, summary of the current state of the galaxy. Um, I think that, uh, you know, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is really suffering. It doesn't have um, a really good way to introduce new, exciting, accessible content to the game. And I think if we compare that to other games out there, like Marvel Strike Force, the other game that I'm most familiar with, you know, they, they are always introducing new characters. And the thing about those new characters is they're almost always more accessible than the characters in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I'm not necessarily talking about legendary characters. Uh, they, they, you know, there can still be kind of caps on them. But, you know, regular characters, they're much easier to unlock. Um, in game, they make them much easier to unlock in game. Once you've unlocked them, you can power them up so you get more bang for your buck, more use out of them, even at low star level. They don't have that cap uh, that we have in Galaxy of Heroes. You know, you can't take people um, to gear 12 and above unless they're they're seven star. That doesn't exist in Marvel Strike Force, which means that I can have two one star characters that I could take all the way up to gear 16 um, and you know be using in really um, big, ra really difficult raids over there and using them very effectively as well. And that just makes a lot of the new content more accessible and much more attractive to me as a player over there. And, and secondly, if I'm going to spend money, uh, you know, a lot of the packs in Galaxy 
galaxy of heroes. They're very, very expensive. If I want to unlock a new character and be able to take them up, so unlock, I need to be able to seven star them to take them up to those high uh, relic levels. I'm looking at spending hundreds of dollars. You can unlock a character and use them effectively at high gear level in Marvel Strike Force uh, much more cheaply. You can do that. There are, you know, uh, 30, 40, 50 dollar packs there that'll give you usable, high power, new characters in that game. So I really think that Galaxy of Heroes kind of struggles with this micro to medium transaction level. I don't have experience with um, Raid Shadow Legends really, or with Star Trek Fleet Commands to, to know how they compare, but I think that's part of the problem the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes um, currently has. I also think, going back to Datacrons and uh, the Grand Inquisitor, that they've really just not put as much thought as they need to into some of the new game content, some of the changes that they've brought in. Um, in, in particular, the, the Inquisitors were underwhelming, and they've not really got anybody prepared uh, for the Grand Inquisitor. I don't know anyone who's excited about unlocking uh, that new Galactic Legend. And Datacrons, I don't know a single person who's excited about Datacrons. I really don't. I don't even know you know, what that person would, would look like, who they would be, someone who's willing to spend, um, you know, large amounts of money on a mobile game every single month for, for temporary gain, or every, every few months, I don't remember how long Datacrons last for, but they're time limited, so every single few months they're willing to shell out this money for a temporary gain, and no long-term gain in the game. I really don't know who they're targeting um, with that mechanic, I think it's very poorly thought out. So, you know, in light of this, yes, I'm feeling a little down about Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes right now. Um, mostly, as I said, this video was inspired because I couldn't think of any other content to make a video on right now, and that just really sucks. I love this game. Um, I've been playing it for three years now, and I want to point out here that I know this is a little bit of a pessimistic video, um, but I'm not... I'm not super down about the game, right? I do still have hope. I've always got to have hope, right? Um, and I do have hope um, for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. The first thing I think, you know, one of the main things to say is that I don't think the game is dying. I've been playing this game for three years. Obviously, it's a lot older than that. Literally, um, the, the week I started playing this game, I started looking on YouTube and I found, I think it was one of Arnold's videos, but I don't know, someone big. And their video was basically, oh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes is dying. Um, maybe it's dying. Maybe it's running out of steam. And that was three years ago, and I felt so down. I thought, how have I just found this game? How have I only just found this awesome game that I really love, I'm really enjoying, and it's immediately dying? Well, cut to three years later, and the game is not dying. In fact, it's still making $147 million last year. Now, yes, that's way less than Marvel Strike Force, way less than Star Trek Fleet Command, way less than Raid Shadow Legends and Genshin Impact, but it's still a lot of money. I think they can still definitely definitely make money on this game and maybe because it's got the star wars tag on it they can still make money on this game for years and years to come it, obviously it will end eventually but i don't think the game is dying right now i don't think it's doomed i do think it needs some tlc i think it needs some love um and i hope that they give it the love and attention that it deserves so that you and I, uh, players who really love the game, maybe mid-game players, not whales, um, can really keep enjoying the game without having to feel as though we're constantly playing catch up without having to feel as though you know we're basically missing out because we can't spend all of this money on the game without being kind of bewildered thinking well why are they introducing this mechanic i don't really understand what it's for um so there you go i don't really know how much of that made sense i'm sort of looking at you know the newest game uh, updates uh, the grand inquisitor and the data crons and really just reflecting on my disappointment with them because there's nothing there to excite me in fact i really don't understand why they're putting in these updates to the game that really don't seem to be thought through and then looking at that information right that generally speaking the amount of money the galaxy of heroes is making is way less than it used to be way less than some of its big major competitors um, and that that's kind of sad i think they could turn this around there's a lot of love for star wars it's the only reason we're playing this game right is because we love star wars so i really think this game could be making more money for cg but i think it's only going to do that if they put the time and care and love and energy into the game that we all know 
it deserves. Right now, I think it's lacking. Well, that's just my reflection. Sorry this is a little bit of a downer. I'm going to get back to normal programming after this. They're not all going to be pessimistic. I do still have hope for the game, but I wanted to share that reflection with you, uh, maybe show you something a little new with some of that information about the, the money side of things there. But I'd be really keen to hear your guys' opinions. You know, how are you feeling about Galaxy of Heroes right now? Um, you know, you're feeling optimistic, pessimistic. What do you think about Grand Inquisitor? What do you think about Datacrons? And I'm totally open to you, you know, telling me that you feel absolutely, you know, completely the other way. Maybe you're super enthusiastic about everything. You love Datacrons. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. In fact, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Uh, whatever it is, do let me know down below. Always love hearing your feedback. Either way, I don't think the game is going anywhere. As long as the game is selective, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, looking forward to making lots of new and more upbeat videos and sharing them with you in the days, months, and years ahead. Uh, well, there you go. I said this was going to be a short video, and it's not so short. Thank you so much for sticking with me and listening to these ramblings. Uh, that is all for me today. I'll see you in the next one. Please like this video if you found it informative or entertaining in any way. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I drop new gameplay videos for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes and Marvel Strike Force every week. And I would love to have you along for the ride. That is all from me today. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Until then, look after each other. And remember, the Force will be with you. Always.